Hi, it's Mary McIntyre. Welcome to another video. This one is something a little bit different and something that I actually feel quite strongly about. I see so often when beginners ask for help with astrophotography that immediately people jump on them and say, you can't do photography if your mount doesn't track. That's not technically true and there are things you can do that will kind of negate the fact that the sky is going to be trailing in your photographs and mostly that is to just do shorter exposures. So yes, this is going to make life very difficult if you're imaging faint objects, but if you're looking at the kind of bigger, brighter deep sky objects, there is no reason at all why you can't capture those short exposures and stack them in the same way that you would do with a longer exposure. Yes, the background is going to be grainier, there is going to be texture there and the result is not going to be as good as the ones that you can do for three minutes but I'm going to show you tonight what you can do looking at Orion's sword including the big Orion nebula and also swinging around to Messier 45 the Pleiades and see if we can get some nebulosity showing up in those pictures as well so I'm going to show you what I'm using to do this experiment tonight and then we'll crack on and take some pictures telescope that I'm going to use for this demonstration is the 70mm thereabouts William Optic Refractor. I'm going to take this eyepiece out and I'm going to use my Canon 1100D which is now 10 years old if not more and on that I've got the T-ring and the extension tube so that will fit onto the telescope in place of this eyepiece. I forgot my tripod so I'm going to have to put the camera down while I put that on. Okay so the camera is now on the telescope so because we've removed the eyepiece and removed the camera lens, this telescope is now basically a giant zoom lens, which is great. So this mount is a little Skywatcher GTI Altaz mount, which is phenomenal. And I'm going to do a separate video reviewing that. But although this mount can track for tonight, I'm not going to have it tracking because I want to show you what is possible. I know that the longest I can expose for without the stars trailing is about two seconds. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got a remote shutter cable here because obviously you don't want to touch this while you're taking pictures. So basically you can just push this. You don't have to program it. You can use one of the really low cost ones. Just push the button and lock it in place and that will keep taking pictures. My camera is in RAW. Uh, that is really important because if you're going to stack images you need there to be data in them and JPEGs are massively compressed and given how little data is going to be in these images in the first place it would be crazy to do this in JPEG. I'm at ISO 1600 because that's the highest I can really go without giving myself problems with this camera just because of its age. If your camera is newer you may be able to go higher and that will help and basically two second shots so that that's easy enough to set up on my camera so i'm just going to make sure the telescope is pointing at the object and then you just press this button and lock it off and just leave it taking two second shots now obviously the sky is going to be moving here so after every few shots we just need to nudge it and make sure that the object is still within the center of the field of view so I can't line all this up and show you everything because I don't have enough hands, but um, trust me, I'm going to point at the Orion Nebula, align the camera, get it all nicely framed so that the Orion sword goes up along this field of view. So I'll probably twist the camera around a bit and then just make sure that I'm nudging it along in between. So I'm going to get this lined up, take some pictures and I'll show you what we've got. We have a visitor, this is Charlie. He is not our cat, but whenever I'm out imaging at night, he loves to come and say hello and weaves around my feet. He's an absolute sweetheart. We have four cats of our own and he's good friends with a couple of them. A couple of other of our cats, not so keen on this idea, but he's a lovely boy and he's usually around somewhere. And this visitor is our cat, this is Coco. Coco thinks it's dinner time every hour of the day, so he's usually out here thinking, Mum, feed me, come in, give me some more food. That is Coco's main purpose in life is to eat dinner eight times a day. I think he's actually a hobbit. 
Now the imaging is complete, so because these are short exposures, they are going to suffer with more noise than ordinary pictures would do, that are taken on a tracked mount I mean, and we want to try to get rid of some of that, and I would always shoot dark calibration frames regardless of my exposure times. So what I've done is put the lens cap back on the telescope, but in addition to that I've put a blanket over the back end of the camera. The reason I do this is because the viewfinder can let light in while the mirror is up. So if you have some kind of unknown light source shining in through the viewfinder when you're shooting your darks, you're going to have some kind of weird kind of light gradient within your dark frames. So I just cover it up just to make sure that is one less thing that could possibly go wrong. I'm shooting this exactly the same way. I haven't changed anything else. So I'm just going to use my remote shutter cable as always, press the button and just take some photographs. So I'll just run off a few darks and I usually aim for between 20 and 50 depending what mood I'm in. As long as you have some, Deep Sky Stacker will do all the hard work for you. So let's look at some of these stacked results. I think that you'll be really impressed by what can be done here. So when you first get your stacked image from Deep Sky Stacker, quite often it looks exactly the same as a single shot, sometimes worse than, but the data is in there. You just need to tease it out and you can do that with any software that has levels and curves adjustments. So that's what I did with this data. I used Photoshop CS2, just lots and lots of small iterations of levels and curves and that kind of teases out a lot more of the detail that's hidden within the image. And this is um, quite a nice result actually. I would have been very pleased with this when I first started out my astrophotography journey. One great benefit of short exposures is no light pollution, but you can see in the processing that the core of the nebula has actually become overexposed. And this is a common problem actually with objects like this that are quite bright. That bit in the middle gets blown out super quickly. So the way that I get around this is I do a second set of, of um, levels and curves adjustments on the same data, but this time just making sure that I don't overexpose the core. So the background isn't as light, but if you look at the core on the picture on the right hand side here, you can see that some of that detail has been preserved. And I then use a, a layer mask in Photoshop to get this result. I would have been so happy with this result when I first started out. As I said, there's a lot of detail there. You can even see the running man at the top of Orion's sword, and that looks great. So let's have a look now at how we got on with the Pleiades data, Messier 45. Again, the stat result doesn't look like there's an awful lot there. It's looking a little bit kind of dull, not a lot of detail, but with the levels and curves adjustments you do tease out a lot more detail. Now because this nebula is a lot fainter than the Orion Nebula, set in the nebulosity, you do have a lot more texture in the background. So that might be you know, a bit of a, an issue, but again, when you first start out, the fact you can get nebulosity at all from a two second shot I think is amazing. Now, this isn't a video about short exposure photography, but I just wanted to show you side by side the difference it makes when you can go longer. So here we've got one times two seconds and one times 90 seconds. There's more background glow there, but you can see just how much more detail you're getting in a single shot. So when you then come to stack the longer exposures, you are obviously going to get way more detail. But that doesn't mean to say that you can't do the two second shots because there's still a lot of detail in that picture on the left hand side. So while you're probably not going to achieve the result on the right, even with lots of exposures, it's still worth trying it. The Pleiades, this really makes a difference because a 120 second shot with the same setup that's being tracked, obviously you're seeing nebulosity in the single shots there. And when you stack those, basically you get an entirely different um, result. This is smoother in the background, the nebulosity is less noisy, it's just really pretty and because there's more data there I haven't had to stretch it so much that the stars have been bloated. So yes, 
you're not going to get the same results with two second shots but honestly just give it a try and it's worth trying this on some of the the kind of bigger nebulae the brighter deep sky objects again just looking at the two pictures that we created in today's video side by side these are pictures that as a beginner i would have been thrilled with so just enjoy it try it and just enjoy it and obviously you can build up and invest in a mount that does longer exposures but if you're not fortunate enough to have one of those for the time being just try it try stacking and see how you get on so i hope you found the video useful if you did don't forget to hit like and share it with people who may be able to benefit from it if you want to learn more about beginners astrophotography, I am doing an astrophotography workshop at the Cranbourne Chase Dark Skies Starfest. It's on the, the week of the 21st to the 26th of February. These events are free to attend and I'm going to be doing a astrophotography workshop covering how to do photography with just digital SLRs and also with a telescope. And that is taking place at 7.30 on the 22nd of February. Um, that's going to cover a lot of beginner stuff, including some of the stuff that's been in this video. So you may find that really helpful to attend. Also, if you have children that are into astronomy, I'm also going to be doing a session in the afternoon teaching children how to do constellation sketching. And also we're going to be making a model of the Milky Way. So if that sounds like something your children will enjoy, then I'll put a link in the description box to where you can book those events. Take care, everyone. I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.